I want to say the first time I was at my house. My mom came home from work and she had three women with her. Two of them I knew from her work, but the third, I never met her. I happily said hello. All four were laughing and giggling about work-related silliness. Then my mom remembered I hadn't met the new lady. Honey, this is Lily. She's new at our work. When I stepped closer to shake her hand, there was a haze around her. I rubbed my eyes and looked at the other women. They looked fine. But when I looked at Lily, I seen this weird haze around her. She must have sensed my stares and became uncomfortable. She suggested it was time to leave. I tried to say it was nice to meet you, but I just couldn't say those words. I instantly began to feel, well, like sick in my stomach. My mother picked up on my demeanor. She shuffled the women out the door and immediately asked me what was wrong. I told her I didn't know, but when I got close to Lily, I got a bad feeling. My mother told me I was being ridiculous. I said I don't know if she's a bad person or if she's done some bad things. I know I don't trust her and you shouldn't either, Mom. She shook her head at me and said she was a grown woman and capable of picking her own friends. I let it go and went to my room. About two weeks went by. Mom came home in tears. Me and Dad tried to comfort her. Apparently, Lily lied and tried to get Mom fired so she could take my mom's position with a substantial pay increase. My mom was very well liked and respected, so her plan failed. After that, I began to sense when a person was less than honest. Another time, I had gone to a tanning salon. I was greeted by an older lady and a slightly younger man. They introduced themselves as the owners of the salon. As I stepped up to the counter, my stomach became sore like I had been doing sit-ups. I cradled my stomach with my free hand, and when I looked up, the man and woman were both surrounded by that haze, uh, just like before. I immediately put my wallet back in my purse and left without saying a word. I told my dad about what happened. Always trust your gut, he said. Three days later, my dad came in my room with a newspaper. That's some gut you got, honey, he said as he dropped the paper on my bed. The headline read, Owners of Tanning Salon Arrested for Secretly Filming Young Girls. My jaw just dropped. That's where I was going to go. Yeah, I know, he said angrily. Always trust your gut. Now, I don't know how many other people experience this sort of thing. I mean, it's not like I see dead people or anything. I think I'm just a normal girl, but over the years, I know I have avoided some bad situations involving really bad people. Most recently, I had an experience that scared the crap out of me. At this point, I'm married with two wonderful sons. I was at our local shopping mart with a full cart of groceries. I began to get that feeling that I was being watched. People moved up and down the aisles, making it harder to tell who it was. I didn't know how, but I knew I had a stalker. I rolled my cart into the main aisle. I walked up and down it, looking down each aisle. People would look up, but then return to their shopping. A middle-aged man near the alcohol aisle angrily stared at me. He was dressed in dark clothes, wearing sunglasses inside the store. It was 7.30 p.m. There was no need for sunglasses. He was not a large man. He just looked shifty. He never broke his stare. My total focus was on his face. I looked side to side so I could get a full scope around him. That's when I saw it. Only this time... The haze was bigger. It looked like, a, like a, more like a black, smoky fog swirling around him. Immediately, my stomach began to tighten into knots. 
I pretended to be looking for a sale item and went to another aisle. Well, I had put four aisles between us, but the moment I looked up, there he was, only much closer than before. Casually, I checked my grocery list and moved to another aisle, this time at the other end of the store. I watched him walk the main aisle, looking in every direction. Then he grabbed his phone and started talking to someone, pointing at the front door. Through the front window of the store, I could see three men standing alongside a white work van. All three men wore dark clothes and looked as shifty as this guy. One of them came into the store, and the first guy nodded his head to him and pointed to the aisle I was in. He began to head toward me. The first guy circled down to the other end of my aisle. I played out every scenario in my head that I could think of. They didn't work for the store. That was obvious. I've been hit on before. These guys were creepy and aggressive. So I knew he wasn't an admirer. As the second one got closer, he put on a pair of black gloves and sunglasses. That aura swirled around him like a sandstorm. Just then, a very large guy pushed a cart full of groceries from another aisle into my aisle. He was built pretty well and had a military haircut. He almost ran into my cart. I am so sorry, he said. I was distracted by my two-page shopping list. I assured him it was no problem. When I looked to see where the two men were, they had both stopped and were waiting to see if I knew this guy with the cart. As he got ready to go past me, I said, Sir, I think I have a problem that I don't know what to do about. He instantly turned around with a look of concern. He said it looked like something was wrong, but he didn't know if he should ask. Quietly, I told him about the two men. Really? he exclaimed. He said we should see how serious they are. He told me to go down the next aisle by myself. He assured me he would not let me out of his sight. I did as he said. The moment I entered the empty aisle, the two were back on the move, heading toward me. My heart began to race. Then I heard, Honey, did you say you wanted 2% or vitamin D? I turned to see the big guy pushing his cart toward me. I smiled and replied, You know that vitamin D is bad for your cholesterol. We both laughed. The two men had stopped just short of us. He looked at them and said, Hey guys, you finding everything you want? They turned and went toward the exit. Unbelievable, he said. Those two were up to no good. He told me to finish my shopping and he would walk me to my car. I told him I didn't care about groceries. No, no, he said. If you do that, they win. And we can't have that. I told him I was done and that I just wanted to go home. He told me he was done too. He wanted me to call my husband and be talking to him as we walked to my car. After we both paid for our groceries, I did what he said. As we exited the store, the side door of the van was open. One guy was in the driver's seat, and the other three were standing to the side of the van. All four stared intently at us. Eyes forward, he said. Nothing to see. I laughed and looked straight ahead. We got to my car, and I was still talking with my husband on the phone. As I threw the groceries into my car, he stood to the side and just waited. Suddenly, I heard squealing tires. I looked up to see the van leaving. It tore down the street like a rocket. Well, I guess they're done shopping, he said. Don't worry, I got their plate number. And FYI, I'm an off-duty officer. I just had to make sure you were safe. Technically, they didn't break any laws, but I was hoping. He smiled. I handed him my phone so my husband could tell him how much we appreciated what he had done for us. He said no problem, but he wanted to go so he could run their plate and surprise them with a visit. I thanked him again, and he was off. Coincidentally, he left the parking lot the same way they did, in the same direction.
When I sat in my car, it all hit me. What could have happened if I didn't see the warnings or if that officer had not been shopping today? I started to shake and felt the tears building. Then I remembered what he said. No, no. Then they win. I took a deep breath, put my car in gear, and pulled out of the parking lot. Coincidentally, the same way they did, but in the opposite 